Hi, this is David Rotan from Castel de Fels. Grace to you and peace in the name of Jesus. This video is on our tool number 10, the Cairo Circle. How can I know what Jesus is saying to me through my circumstances? How can I move from being reactive to being proactive? To a certain extent, this tool is the foundation to everything else because it leads us to the two key questions of a disciple. What is Jesus saying to me? What will I do in response? I learned about the Cairo Circle from this book here, Building a Discipling Culture by Mike Breen from England. In Mark 1 it says, Now after John had been taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Now, when it says time here, it uses the Greek word kairos, which means time in the sense of the moment. In other words, Jesus is saying, now is the moment. The kingdom of God is already here. There is grace and new opportunities. All things are possible. You only have to do two things. And what are those two things? Well, just look at the verbs that follow. Repent and believe in these good news. Let me explain all this in graphic form. Let's say that this arrow is your life. You're there, minding your own business, when suddenly something happens. Now, this X moment is also a Kairos moment. You need to make a decision. Option A, you try to continue with your life as if nothing had happened. Or option B, you can enter into the Cairo circle. That is, have a new experience of God's kingdom of love and power and grow as a disciple of Jesus. You decide. Now, if you go for option B, I want more of God, I want to learn to be more like Jesus, then you can enter into this process which has two parts. The first part, as we saw earlier, is to repent. And the second part is to believe. Now, to repent means to change our way of thinking. How do we do this with the Cairo circle? Well, there are three steps. The first step is to observe. What is happening in my life at the moment? Sometimes it's obvious. I'm at home on lockdown because of the coronavirus. Other times it can be something more subtle. Ask Jesus to help you know what Kairos moment he wants to work through with you today. In Romans 8 it says, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. So everything that happens to me is because, A, it's something good that God does as a sign of his love, or B, it's something bad that God allows because he has a plan to make it work together for my good. Because he's my father and he loves me. Otherwise, he'd never allow it. Either way, good or bad, God has a plan to bless me. That is what the kingdom of God is all about. That is what the Cairo circle is about. So first, I observe what is going on in my life at the moment. The second step is to reflect. What is Jesus saying to me through this? In John 10, 27, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So first, I hear his voice, and then I follow him. So then, what is it that he wants me to know, or think, or ask, or do about this Kairos moment? The second step is to reflect. The third step of this first part of repenting is to discuss. That is, share what you've been reflecting on with someone else. Proverbs 27 says, Iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. We weren't made to be lone rangers. We need each other. That's why the Bible speaks about the family of God as being a body where all the members help and support each other. Share what you have observed and reflected on, 
and listen to how your brother or sister in the faith responds. Even if they are newer in the faith, it doesn't matter. The mere action of expressing your thoughts out loud will help you organize them better. Okay, let's move on to the second part, to believe. Now, in the New Testament, one synonym of believing is obeying. Wherever you see the word believe in the New Testament, you can substitute obey and it will work perfectly, and vice versa. It doesn't change the meaning at all. In God's eyes, to believe implies you will also obey, and if you obey, it's because you believe. Look, for example, at John 3.36. He who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the Son will not see the life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Do you see the parallel here between believe and obey? The Apostle James says it even more clearly. But are you willing to recognize, you foolish fellow, that faith without works is useless? Belief without obedience is useless. To believe but not practice your faith is to be a foolish fellow who deceives himself. So the first step of the second part is to make an action plan. What am I going to do in response to what I've reflected? What is Jesus challenging me to do? How, where, and when am I going to start? What is my plan? And when I develop my action plan, I move on to the next step, which is share the plan. Things will go a lot better for me if I share my plan with a good Christian friend. There is power in unity. Hebrews 10 says, And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. We need one another. I need the encouragement of other people. A burning coal, if left by itself, will go out. I don't know how they measured this, but experts say that the mere act of sharing your goal with someone else increases your chances of reaching it by 85%. So share your plan. And that takes us to the last part of this growth process using the Cairo Circle. Execute. Execute your plan. Put it into practice. Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. It is the one who does what God tells them that will experience the grace and new unlimited opportunities of the kingdom of God. Growth comes through obedience, through implementing your plan. So, execute. And that's the Cairo Circle. We could summarize it all with two questions. What is Jesus saying to me? And what will I do in response? Once I was with a friend of mine who is also called David, by the way, and we were talking about the Cairo Circle. At the time, I was very frustrated with our telephone provider. They had started charging us for services that we'd never requested, and I had written all kinds of complaints, but to no avail. They just ignored me completely. I was really annoyed and angry, but while speaking with David, I suddenly realized that this too was a Kairos moment. If God had allowed it to happen, it was because he had a plan to make it work together for our good. So after I observed this, I reflected on it and discussed it with my friend David. As it turned out, he had recently changed his telephone provider and was quite happy with the new company. Perhaps Jesus wanted us to make a change too. David encouraged me to look into it. So I made an action plan right then and there with him that I would look into it that very afternoon. And one week later, I had a new telephone provider, and in our first month with this new provider, we had already saved more money than the amount that the old provider had stolen from us. I then realized that the only thing Jesus had wanted all along was to help our family save money. That is the power of the Cairo Circle. It can take you from anger and powerlessness to the joy of experiencing once again how Jesus really is our Good Shepherd and takes care of us. Okay, so that's the Cairo Circle. 
What stood out to you most in this video? What is your Kairos moment for today? What do you sense Jesus challenging you to do? What is he saying to you? When are you going to take the first step? What is your action plan? Lord Jesus, thank you for being my good shepherd and for looking after me. Help me see what my Kairos moment is today. Give me the grace to listen to your voice and to respond as an obedient disciple. Amen. We'll end here. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful, give it a like and share it or write something in the comment section. The next video will be on our tool number 11, Four Steps for Processing Your Wounds with Jesus. How can I reach that point where I see that even some of the most painful events of life have worked together for my good? How can I forgive someone from the heart when they have done the unforgivable? How can I diminish the power of negative emotions that sometimes threaten to overwhelm me? This tool of the four steps is one way to have a deep conversation with Jesus about the things that have really hurt me, to mourn my losses in a healthy manner, and to receive his healing and new life. So subscribe and stay tuned to the channel. Okay, let me leave you with a final prayer. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Amen.